Hi and welcome to my new video on Kruskal Wallace test. The Kruskal Wallace test, as you know, is a non-parametric alternative to ANOVA. ANOVA is a parametric test. That means that it has certain assumptions that need to be met or satisfied. One of the main assumptions is the normality assumption. So the normality assumption is that the residuals have to be normally distributed. If this assumption is not met, then uh, performing the ANOVA is not possible. Some statisticians believe that uh, ANOVA can be performed irrespective of the normality of data. However, the general consensus is that when the residuals are not normally distributed, uh, ANOVA should not be performed. So let's go and test whether our data is uh, normally distributed or rather our residuals are normally distributed. Before that, I will explain what this data set is about. This data set is about the depression, anxiety and stress scores of respondents uh, uh, who are essentially employees from a company. So we are going to be using the depression, anxiety and stress scores uh, totaled together as the dependent variable and for the independent variable we will be using a, a, a categorical variable in the form of current physical health. The current physical health is divided into three categories. One is uh, good, the two is average and three is poor. So before that, we need to find out whether our residuals are normally distributed. So let's go and find that out. So one of the major drawbacks of the uh, PSPP software that we are using is that it cannot generate residuals from a univariate analysis. So uh, only from a univariate analysis uh, in the form of a general linear model, uh, we can actually uh, obtain these residuals that, I am, uh, that we have analyzed here. So that can be only performed on SPSS. So uh, once we generate the residuals, uh, you need to check the skewness and kurtosis to ensure that the um, data is normally distributed or not. So this is the residual value and you can see the skewness here. It's 0.221 with an error of 0.337. And the kurtosis value is uh, minus 1.464 with the error of 0.662. Now there are different um, methods or different uh, techniques of, ensure, of uh, finding out whether the data is too skewed or whether the kurtosis is uh, out of the normal uh, uh, for a particular distribution. So one of the common ways or the more um, popular ways of uh, ensuring this is by dividing the skewness value which is 0.221 here by the error which is 0.337. If we obtain a number or a value that's greater than 1.97, then uh, we can say uh, 1.96 rather, then we can say that uh, this data is skewed. Similarly, for kurtosis, we need to divide 1.464, which is the kurtosis value, uh, and we have to divide it by the standard error, uh, which is 0.662. Again, if you if you obtain a value that's greater than 1.96 then we can say that uh, the kurtosis is, is not normal and so we don't have a normal distribution. So both these conditions have to be met to, for, it, for the distribution to be called a normal distribution. So let's go and test that. So let me get my calculator. Okay, so here we have the calculator. So the first, uh, we will first uh, test the skewness uh, value. The skewness is 0. 221 will divide that by the standard error which is 0 0.337 we get a value of 0 0.655 so 0 0.655 is actually a good number it should be less than 1.96 and so it is so skewness is not a problem you can see that the skewness is uh, positive here which means the the tail on the right side is is longer you know that's what skewness uh, the value here indicates. So skewness is fine. So let's look at kurtosis. Uh, the kurtosis value is uh, minus 1. Point, I'm sorry, minus 1.464. We divide that by uh, uh, 0 0.662 and we obtain a value of minus 2.211. So that's greater than uh, 1.96. Yeah. So that essentially means that the kurtosis is not normal. 
and whenever we have a negative value of the kurtosis, uh, in this case, like we have it in this case, uh, it means that uh, the uh, distribution is, uh, you know, kind of fat. Uh, what I mean by that is, you can just have a look at this histogram and get an idea. So you can see it's rather a flat or a fat curve, you know, with um, uh, with uh, lighter tails. It has a lighter tail, and there's a lot of, uh, uh, you know, the bulk at the center. So uh, this is this is usually called a negative kurtosis. Yeah. So the uh, skewness is fine, but the kurtosis is not fine. So therefore, we can't say that this distribution is normal. Now, in SPSS, you have another option of testing normality of the residuals, uh, where uh, we have done that. This is the Shapiro-Wilkes test, and this should not be st statistically significant. This value should be greater than 0.05. But uh, this is uh, statistically significant at a very high level. So it's 0 0.000, which indicates that this distribution is not normal. So now that we've established that our distribution is not normal, we need to uh, then perform the kruskal wallis test instead of the ANOVA. Okay, so one of the uh, major conditions uh, for performing the kruskal wallis test is that the uh, groups must have similar uh, shape across the distribution. So even though the kruskal wallis test is a non-parametric test, a non-parametric test generally don't have any major assumption, this particular assumption has to be satisfied. Uh, previously, we uh, did the test for normality and we discovered that our distribution is not, is not normal or rather the residuals are not normally distributed. So we had to you know, reject the possibility of performing the ANOVA. So instead of that, we'll be performing the kruskal wallis test. Now, as I said, we, there's one uh, condition or assumption that needs to be satisfied with regard to the kruskal wallis test. That is the shape of the groups across the distribution. For that, uh, we need to go to File. Uh, we need to click New. Select Syntax. Type Examine. Hit Enter. Type Variable. Sorry. Variable and uh, we need to press equal and then we need to select our dependent variable our dependent variable in this case is the um, total depression anxiety and stress score yeah this is a continuous variable so we just select that and then um, we paste it over here then we hit enter we type by hit enter then we need to enter our independent variable our independent variable here is the current physical uh, status um, which is here we select that and then we copy that then again we go to the syntax paste it here hit enter slash plot equal to box plot okay so and then we say run run all so we'll get this uh, output immediately now uh, you can see that uh, the box plots here and you can see these uh, three different groups. Now, three different groups, uh, we need to examine whether they are in the similar shape. They have a similar shape. Now, in reality, you know, it's very difficult to find three different groups having the same shape. Uh, but overall, we can just, uh, through, uh, you know, visual observation, we can see that it's not too different. They're not too different from each other in terms of shape, whiskers, and all of that. So, uh, we can uh, conclude that uh, this uh, condition or uh, assumption has been satisfied and we can move on to performing the kruskal wallis test. Okay, so uh, let's go and perform the kruskal wallis test. Uh, first thing you need to remember is that uh, our dependent variable in this case is a continuous variable, which is uh, depression, anxiety, and stress, or DAS. Uh, but I have labeled it as total depression just for reference, but it involves both uh, uh, anxiety and stress as well. So it's total DAS. Uh, that's the dependent variable. It's continuous in nature. And then you have... Um, the independent variable, which is actually the current physical health, uh, it has three different levels, uh, as I'll show you now. It's good, average, and poor. So these are the kind of variables that you need to use in the uh, uh, kruskal wallis test. The kruskal wallis test is actually, as I said, an alternative to ANOVA. So an ANOVA where you have a, a categorical variable and a continuous variable being used. Uh, it's, uh, that's the same process here as well. So we go to Analyze, Non-Parametric Statistics. We uh, click on uh, K independent samples. Here we select the our uh, dependent variable. The dependent variable being the uh, total depression, anxiety, and stress, which is uh, total task. 
then we select the uh, grouping variable which is the independent variable in our case it's the current physical health we click that we define the groups the lower limit is one the upper limit is three because the that's the three groups then we click continue then we select Chris call Wallace H and we click OK so here you can see the Chris call Wallace test has given a, its a result uh, you can see that uh, the total depression score uh, is higher is the highest among those who have stated that they have a poor uh, physical health you know so uh, in the Chris call Wallace test instead of the mean score you have the mean rank so the mean rank is not too different from the mean score so you know it's it's similar to the mean score itself so a higher mean rank usually means a higher mean score as well that's the general assumption and so uh, you can see that the mean rank is higher for those who have said that their physical health was poor you know so people with the poor physical health seem to have a higher level of depression anxiety and stress uh, uh, which has been mentioned as total depression here but it means uh, all three depression anxiety and stress and uh, it's slightly um, and there is not much difference between the average and the good so it's just a difference of hardly one you know one or two uh, but there's a huge difference between uh, uh, you know these two and this one which is 33 so uh, the physical health seems to play a very important role in determining the uh, depression anxiety and stress score of the respondents is what we gain from here moreover the other thing we, we can note here is the uh, significance value which is uh, 0 0.015 which is less than uh, 0.05 so that is statistically significant uh, in some sense yeah it's statistically significant at a, a moderate level so uh, that's about it and uh, the, how, how to interpret this or rather write it uh, you can follow my uh, you can have a look at my video on ANOVA where I actually you know write the uh, write or interpret the this particular data in, a, in, in words okay so it's the similar to that process the only difference is that instead of mean score you'll have to be mentioning you'll be mentioning the mean rank but apart from that there's not much difference so that's about it uh, thanks for watching if you like the video please uh, give a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to my channel